Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I did the story not so long ago about the Ford pickup trucks rolling over the Super Duties. During a certain time frame, the roofs in Ford Super Duties on trucks that rolled over had a propensity to cave in more than other truck roofs, and it was simply because they were in a different class that didn't require more robust rollover crush standards. And so there was a lawsuit filed. There's been a couple of lawsuits filed. And the allegations in the lawsuit are that these trucks are, are inherently unsafe because of that crush risk in a rollover. And so there was a debate, and I talked about it in the video, about the fact that you can make a truck roof more resistant to crushing on rollover by strengthening the pillars and possibly strengthening the, the, the integrity of the roof. But of course, that raises the cost of the vehicle and also makes the vehicle heavier. And ironically, a vehicle that's top heavy is more prone to rolling over than one that's not. It might not be that pronounced with a small amount of metal we're talking here, but I'm simply talking in theoretical terms. And so that was part of the debate there. Well, the interesting thing is this took a turn very recently, over the weekend, Edwards sent me notes to Steve, check this out. There are allegations now that not only were the roofs weaker than the other classes of trucks because they didn't need to be stronger. The allegation was simply that they just didn't build them to higher standards. Why should they? The allegation now is they're using cheaper steel. They're using cheaper steel to save money. That's the allegation. So got to make sure we hear all the sides in these stories. And, and this right like I said, just came to me over the weekend. From carbuzz.com, Jared Neves wrote it. Edward sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Ford accused of using cheap steel on super duty trucks. Ford has been allegedly hiding the deadly nature of its roof design, according to attorneys who are working on these cases. A class action lawsuit has been brought by owners of Ford super duty trucks, and they accuse Ford of fraudulent concealment, among other things, pertaining to the crash integrity of those trucks. Attorneys from the law firm say they've got proof that Ford used increasingly weaker steel and materials in the roofs of Super Duty trucks built between 99 and 2016. That's also a slightly different time frame than what we were talking about earlier. So when the public looks at Ford's history of subtle yet impactful and plentiful design choices over the decades, it has made these trucks... A single storyline is clear. Ford has repeatedly chosen to degrade the structural capacity and therefore safety of its trucks again and again for the sake of costs. This is uh, Steve Berman, co-founder and managing partner Hagen's Berman, which is the law firm handling the class action. He added, a read of Ford's choices is a redundant tale of deletions and down gauge of steel reducing the thickness of essential components of the truck cab. Now, this is from an amended class action. So they filed a lawsuit, did some discovery, I'm guessing, and then amended the class action lawsuit to include some more details, I'm presuming based on things they discovered during their litigation. They now say that Ford was aware of the defect before these vehicles went to market. Uh, this says the document, is backed up by the fact that the automaker marketed these vehicles as both safe and tough qualities that appeal to unassuming buyers. And of course, that's one of the things. Ford's trucks are very, very well respected in many circles as being extremely durable trucks. And they also sell a lot of trucks. So in 1996, Ford is said to have approved the replacement of boron steel with a lesser steel in the B pillars in these trucks. This allegedly saved $20.86 per vehicle, but it also reduced the tooling costs of building the vehicles by over a million dollars. So the tooling cost less money and then each truck cost less. Boron steel is reportedly four to five times stronger than the steel they replaced it with. And I will admit I have no idea on the metallurgy here. I assure you that in my audience, I've got at least one person with metallurgic knowledge who's going to step in and say yes or no on that. And the question is, what is boron steel and what did they replace it with? Because they do not say what they replaced it with. Additionally, the complaint states that Ford also removed strengthening components from around the windshield and used weaker steel around the A-pillar. 
Uh, back in 98, the 2.4 millimeter A pillar, I'm assuming they are referring to how thick the metal is, went from 2.4 millimeters to 2.35 millimeters. And you wait, Steve, seriously, 0.05 millimeters is going to make a difference? Well, it turns out that that's about 70 cents a vehicle over a lot of vehicles. But also, they later downgraded it to 2.5 two millimeters, which saved them a dollar seventy two a vehicle. And I can tell you, because I know people who work at the car companies, that if they can find a way to save a penny, they will. Because over the life of the vehicle run, that adds up. But also they find a penny here and a penny there and a dollar seventy two here and seventy cents there. And it starts adding up. And a penny saved is profit. So Ford's rejection of its own tests and efforts to increase profits is outlined above by purposefully degrading the strength of the roof, both pre- and post-production of the first roof crush risk vehicles. Squarely evidence Ford's knowledge that the roof crush risk vehicles had an unsafe and dangerous design from before the sale of the first 1999 model year, Super Duty. So they're saying that Ford built some trucks, tested them for roof crush risk, and saw what the results were, and then proceeded anyway. That's the allegation in the lawsuit. The complaint follows yet another lawsuit where Ford was ordered to pay $1.7 billion in damages in a similar case. In 2014, a couple were traveling in their 2002 F-250 when it rolled over, and they both were killed. Now, Ford is uh, working on appealing that one. In 2015, the Dearborn-based brand was told to fork over $152 million dollars for a gentleman involved in a serious rollover accident, but that was in a 1998 Ford Explorer. Uh, so that's kind of a slightly different roof structure than the uh, pickup trucks. Uh, but the amended class action here about the steel uh, hopes to seek repayment for owners and lessees, which includes covering the loss of vehicle value and additional costs. And the question, of course, is if you own a vehicle and it hasn't rolled over, what are your damages? Now they're saying a loss in vehicle value. But I guess the question then is, will people really spend less money on these trucks? And they go, oh, that's the year that if it rolls over, the roof might crush, but the next year's not. What's the differential between those two values? There might be a value. Um, but again, that would be somebody uh, who does a lot of work with the used car markets who could tell us that. Aside from the fraudulent concealment allegations, the lawsuit also alleges that Ford's actions are a violation of the warranties, but consumer rights laws as well. And in national class actions, you often have issues with this because a lot of the laws you like to pursue are statewide. And so with a national class action, you've got to look for broader uh, laws to apply. The attorney says, Ford has clearly failed its customers and has failed the public in living up the basic level of responsibility that a company must adhere to when selling products to the public. So the allegation is that if you were to go into, say, a junkyard and break out a hacksaw, and you've got the permission to do this, and you were to hacksaw through the A pillar, which is the pillar, if you're sitting in the driver's seat with a wheel in your hands, the windshield's in front of you, the window to the door is here. If you open the door up, there is a frame that goes down right here. That's the A pillar, the A, like the letter A pillar. So if you were to take a hacksaw and hack through the A pillar and then measure how thick that metal was, they're saying that one year it was... 2.4 millimeters, and then it was reduced to 2.35, and then downgraded to 2.2. And again, you might say, Steve, going from 2.4 to 2.2 millimeters, really? Well, it's that plus the different kind of steel. So they're saying it all adds up to making the vehicles less safe in a rollover. So that's the allegation, but that is a whole different thing than what we heard before. So we heard before was, that they had simply looked at it and said, well, it's a cost-benefit analysis. We can strengthen the roofs beyond what's required by federal standards to make them safer in a rollover. What are the odds of that happening? So the allegation in this earlier case was simply that it was a decision Ford made and said, we built them to industry standards. That should be enough. Now they're saying, well, you may have built an industry standards, but you did downgrade the quality of the metal and you made the metal thinner and thinner. And they're claiming that Ford knew 
that that increased the risk. And the allegation then is, what would Ford be on the hook for? So it's a class action lawsuit, uh, and we'll see how this progresses. But these allegations are new and different. Edward, thanks for sending it. Carbuzz.com ran it. And uh, Jared Neves wrote that. Ford accused of using cheap steel on super duty trucks. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The less stuff I own, the less my stuff owns me.